strong possibility that international humanita humanitarian law has been violated in a manner that could amount to war crimes. It will continue to resist against this occupation by all means. Grave violation of human rights, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and state terror are the massacres and a genocide being carried out to exterminate the Palestinian people. A racist and criminal mentality. This the massacre and genocide continue. You know, I'll give the floor to UN Watch. Now, I have just returned here from visiting Israel to tell this assembly and the world about the grave situation that I witnessed and experienced. An entire nation, towns, villages, and cities, from the Negev desert up to the Galilee, from the Judean hills of Jerusalem to the Tel Aviv seashore, has been under brutal and relentless attack from more than 2,000 mortars, rockets, and long-range missiles fired from Gaza toward civilians in every part of the Holy Land. Never before in the history of Israel's seven decades of existence has its men, women, and children come under such a massive aerial assault, forcing them, at the sound of air raid sirens day and night, to run for shelter. And never before in the modern history of nations has a free and democratic society come under such sustained bombardment from a terrorist organization, one that openly strives for and celebrates the murder of civilians and that, as its general world view, glorifies death. Did the world ever imagine that the ancient city of Jerusalem, sacred to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and replete with holy places that are recognized by the United Nations as protected World Heritage Sites would be deliberately targeted by indiscriminate rockets? And yet it is. During one air raid in Jerusalem, I ran down to the basement of a building with little children crying and traumatized. During an air raid in Tel Aviv, the neighbors of an apartment building showed great strength of spirit in defiance of terrorism by reaching out to strangers in the shelters as we heard the booms of the rockets above. And as I was seated in my airplane, about to depart back and return here to Geneva. The air raid siren went off in the airport. We all had to rush off the plane to seek shelter. You've heard the news today that international airlines are now ceasing to fly to Israel because of this danger. I believe that the world should salute this terrorized, besieged, and embattled nation, which has refused to surrender to demoralization, instead showing such courage, resolve, and strength of spirit in surviving and resisting this massive aggression. Mr. President, I turn now to the resolution upon which this Council will soon vote. The text denounces Israel, denies its right to self-defense, and disregards Hamas war crimes. We ask, why does this Council refuse to say that which was said only two weeks ago by the Palestinian ambassador himself? In an extraordinary moment of candor, Ambassador Khreishi admitted on Palestinian television July 9th that, quote, each and every Palestinian missile launched against Israeli civilians constitutes a crime against humanity. That, by contrast, Israel's own response actions in Gaza, quote, follow the legal procedures because, as Hamas admitted on television, the Israelis warned them to evacuate their homes before the bombardment, he said. But, however, quote, as for the missiles launched from our side, we never warn anyone about where these missiles are about to fall or about the operations we carry out. And so, can any UN entity or any individual be truly for human rights when they refuse to say that which the Palestinian ambassador said himself? Is it possible that the true purpose of this session is to silence the true victims and voices of human rights around the world by deflecting attention from the world's worst abuses. And we ask all those who embrace hypocrisy and double standards, if in the past year you did not cry out when thousands of protesters were killed and injured by Turkey, Egypt and Libya, when more victims than ever were hanged by Iran, women and children in Afghanistan were bombed, whole communities were massacred in South Sudan, hundreds in Pakistan were killed by jihadist terrorist attacks, 10,000 Iraqis were killed by terrorists. So there is a, there's a point of order. So I don't see that we have a reason to come and discuss other issues relating to human rights situations in other different countries. And therefore, you should allow the NGO to continue to speak. My delegation would like to fully support the point of order that made by the distinguished delegation of Egypt. Thank you. We would urge you to allow the NGO to complete their intervention. We request that you allow this NGO to continue with their statement. We also would like to support the point of order uh, made by Egypt. Thank the, you. the speaker will continue along the same lines if the speaker is not stopped. It's unconceivable that an organization, an NGO, should be able to come to this council to distract us with the little time we have to debate an issue which is of such crucial importance as the genocide being committed currently uh, against the Palestinian people.
Thank you, Mr. President. I'll just note that there were some questions whether the videotape interview on Palestinian TV by the ambassador was genuine or not. But we see that the Palestinian ambassador has just intervened and has failed to deny those remarks and let the record show that. Finally, we ask if those who refuse to speak out for Palestinians, 1,800 Palestinians, if not more, who were starved to death and murdered by Assad in Syria, but you only cry out when Israel can be blamed, then you are not pro-human rights, you are only anti-Israel. Syria, you have the floor, please. Uh, say the race. Mr. President, uh, we're used to hearing this uh, non-governmental organization creating uh, divisions uh, among the uh, speakers uh, and speaking out of turn. I hope this speaker will no longer be allowed to continue his statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Let the world note that in a session purportedly on Palestinian human rights, the government of Syria objected for us to mention the 1,800 Palestinians that they starved and murdered. 